This video demonstrates the measurement of the unloaded cue of a resonator using two different transmission methods. This is not a theory video. If you need to see the theoretical background, and you probably do if you're not familiar with it, you can skip ahead to the end of this video where you will find a link to the theory video. You'll need the content of that video to make sense of this video. So now I have connected the resonator to an HP 8719C vector network analyzer. And the resonator is this empty rectangular copper cavity, nothing but empty space inside, and it is connected with these two ports, port 1 and port 2, which are connected to port 1 and port 2 of the network analyzer. And there's this little rod protruding from outside the cavity. I'll let you speculate what it is for. It is not going inside the cavity. It's entirely outside. But type your guess in the comments below, and we'll see if anybody guesses correctly. The S21 versus frequency is displayed on the network analyzer, along with loaded Q, which is calculated within the processing of the network analyzer and is also displayed on the screen. So we can read that directly off the screen. We're resonating at 4.935 gigahertz, and I have the span set to 30 megahertz. Let me warn you, don't set the span too wide, because there are only so many points. I think I have it set to 401 points right now. The first step is to turn on all of the markers. So go to marker, MKR, and with all the markers initially off, turn them on. One, two, three, and four. You need four markers on in order to measure loaded Q. You need to tell the network analyzer to use one of them as a reference. I always push delta ref equals 1. And then you need to tell the network analyzer what to measure. So you go to marker function. Make sure tracking is turned on. And it is. That's this one right here. Set the search to max so that one of the markers goes straight to the maximum. And then you turn on bandwidth measure, which is what you need to get loaded Q because that's frequency divided by bandwidth. You push bandwidth measure, and then you have to make sure that bandwidth value is set to minus 3 decibels, actually minus 3.01 decibels. Bandwidth measure then turned on gives you the loaded Q, and we have a loaded Q of 1,322. Now let's measure the reflection at port 1 and port 2. We'll start with port 1. To do that, we need to change S21 to S11. First turn off the markers. These markers won't help us with this measurement. And then auto scale it so we can see it. And you can see that it is not pretty. It is not a horizontal flat line in the background, making it difficult to determine where that minimum is to be measured relative to. If you want an accurate determination of unloaded Q, you need to subtract that out. Otherwise, you have to eyeball it. So we're going to go with precision and subtract that out. To do so, it's really best to detune the resonator. Otherwise, you need to guess that that's about, oh, one and a half decibels. So we're going to detune the resonator and get a more accurate determination. This particular resonator has no tuner built into it, but there are no currents passing from the long sidewalls onto the end wall. So what I'm going to do is just pull the end wall back and lower the frequency. And the resonance will just disappear from the screen of the network analyzer, leaving the background, which I can then subtract out. I'm just going to unscrew all of these and pull the lid away Let's go back to the display and make a note of what the background looks like before we remove the resonance. I'm going to pull this away and see if we've detuned it enough. Okay, we have detuned it, and what we have left is the background. I'm going to narrow the sweep down to 30 megahertz just to avoid any possibility of the resonance being just below the sweep range and distorting the response. To zero out the background, you go to Cal, calibrate menu and respond. The idea here is to get rid of the background. So we have to look at everything from the cable up to the antenna that's inside the cavity as what has to come out of this response. If you treat the antenna inside the cavity as open circuited to the resonator, then you should be able to subtract that response out and have a horizontal flat line. Push cal, calibrate menu, response, and open and it will measure the open circuit calibration coefficients. I'll push done and you'll notice we have a horizontal line. I've gotten rid of the background. I've not calibrated the network analyzer. You'll not get a meaningful VSWR, but you will get a flat response. I'm going to retune the resonance now. 
And it really didn't work out all that well. You notice up here it goes up a little bit. I suspect it's because the resonance was just below the sweep range and so it's distorting the curve. And the result is that it's a little bit higher. So we're going to use over to the right as the zero. I'm going to turn on a marker, marker one, and I'm going to put it at the minimum. And then I'm going to turn on a second marker, marker two, and I'm going to put it way up here at the highest frequency. And then I'll turn on delta mode, reference one, and I will be able to measure the depth of the dip. It's 1.695 decibels, which is more precise than the 1.5 that I was eyeballing earlier. Change S11 to S22, and you'll notice that the COR disappears from the screen, so it's no longer corrected. Now we have S22. I'm going to auto scale it. That's a lot better than S11. I'll widen the span just to see it. I think I can make a fairly good judgment about where these lines are leveling off. I'm going to slide the trace up to the red reference level line on the eighth graticule. And I think it's clear that it's leveling off at a flat horizontal line. I'm going to put marker 2 way out at the far right end of the sweep. And I'm going to put marker 1 right at the minimum. And I have delta mode turned on, so the difference between markers 1 and 2 are displayed right on top of the sweep. And I see a depth of 3.97 decibels for this dip. And I did this without having to subtract the background. That was all the data we need for the full two-port method of Q measurement. Now let's measure the Q using the transmission method. For that, I need to go back to S21 and turn off all the markers. We'll start over with that. So there's the S21 sweep. Let's turn on the markers. One, two, three, and four are turned on. Delta mode, set the reference to marker one. Marker function, tracking is on. Peak search is set to max. Bandwidth menu, and bandwidth is turned on. Make sure the width value is set to minus 3 decibels. We have a loaded queue of 1,335. It's a little bit different from the last sweep, but that could be because I unscrewed the cavity in order to detune the resonator. The detuning and retuning of the cavity can make the queue a little bit different. Now I need the insertion loss. Right now the insertion loss says minus 12.122 decibels at resonance. I'm not sure I can believe that. We haven't subtracted out the cable loss. They're good cables, but let's subtract them. And then we can say that the remaining insertion loss is from the cavity. So I'm going to subtract out the insertion loss of the cables by removing them from the cavity. Now replace the resonator with an SMA bullet. And one thing I would comment about, as you attach components like these adapters, always turn the nut of the connector and not the component itself. You don't want to scrape the gold plating off the pins and sleeves. Check that all connections are tight. Turn off the markers. The trace is not exactly horizontal or straight or at zero. I'm going to calibrate it out. Calibrate. Calibrate menu, response, through, because I want to subtract out all of the excess insertion loss for a through measurement. It sweeps once to measure its calibration coefficients. We still haven't removed the insertion loss of the bullet, and we're not going to. If you want to remove the insertion loss of the bullet, you get yourself a calibration kit with known calibration coefficients and do it the right way. So we have zero insertion loss. A number scattered around zero is displayed for the S21 at the top of the screen. Now I'm going to reconnect the resonator. With all of the SMA connector snug, auto scale it, and I'll put a marker at the peak by searching the maximum. And I measure an insertion loss at resonance of 11.46 decibels. Now we can proceed to do a calculation of this unloaded Q and compare it. So now let's calculate the resulting unloaded Q from the two methods, the full two-port method and the transmission method, using the numbers we just measured. For the full two-port, we measured a loaded Q of 1322 and delta S11 of minus 1.69 decibels and delta S22 of minus 3.97. So the first thing we want to do is get the magnitudes of those delta S11 and delta S22. So we convert them from decibels back into magnitude. So minus 1.69 by 20 and raised to the power 10. 
0 0.823 and same for this 0 0.633 so now we can calculate the coupling coefficients beta 1 is 1 minus 0 0.823 divided by 0 0.823 plus 0 0.633 0 0.122 beta 2 likewise 0 0.252 Put them down here to get the unloaded Q, so 1 plus the coupling coefficients multiplied by the loaded Q, 1816. That's the unloaded Q per the full two-port method. For the transmission method, we have the insertion loss, 11.46 decibels. We'll take that as a positive number because the minus sign is in the expression. The peak was 11.46 decibels below the zero. So put these numbers into that expression, and I get 1822. So there you have it. The unloaded Q measured with the full two-port method gave 1,816 and pretty much the same number using the transmission method. There's a plus or minus on all of those, which you could propagate through if you estimate the uncertainties and the return losses. Next time, I'll talk about how to measure the unloaded Q when you only have one port available in the resonator.